Hi everyone, my name is Reggie and welcome to my channel. If you didn't read the title, which I know you did, we are doing the worst books I read in the first half of 2019. This is a video that I've never done before. People do these all the time and I'm always like, well, that's gonna spoil my list at the end of the year because you know what's gonna be on it, but is it really? What if things change? They inevitably will. This is not the list of the year. This is the list of the first half of the year. And I'm interested, for one, to see how the first half of the year compares to the second half of the year. So we're doing this video today. I honestly didn't think I was gonna do this, not just because I don't do these ever, but because I'd only really read like one book that I didn't love this whole year. Like most books were like three stars, so nothing like to write home about, but nothing to like cry about either and then in literally the last month or two I've read so many disappointing or bad books that we're, we're just gonna do it. Starting off we have Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart. I thought I was gonna love this. That's probably part of why it got such a low rating. I gave this a 2.5 stars. This is the story of a girl who um she's a Slytherin let's just say that and not the cute ambitious little Slytherin. She's like a Draco. She is mmm she is not a good time. I don't even remember her name. Her actions weren't forgettable, but her personality was super forgettable. Kind of actually a plot convenience because she's trying to like mold into different people. Anyways, this book, the gimmick is that it's told backwards. So you read the end of the book. The first chapter is chapter 19. And then you read chapter 18 is the second chapter you read. And so you're piecing this like narrative together and then you're like oh that character she was the one that did that and like you're piecing things together thought this would be super fun and clever it just really missed the mark for me I thought it was really dull it wasn't fascinating it wasn't new I really thought I was gonna love this because of the narrative structure it was really bland overall I thought the characters were boring next up is actually a book I finished today this was going to be a top five list. Now it's a top six list because I had to put this on here. This is What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. I don't think I like Adam Silvera's books. The story is about two boys who have a meet cute in a New York City post office and they can't find each other after that exchange and go on an adventure to try to find each other and then the relationship that follows. I was really into the part where they were trying to find each other. Once they found each other, didn't gel with their relationship, wasn't on board, didn't like it. The 0 0.5, that 2.5, that 0.5, that, that up in it, that was that first like third where they were just like trying to find each other. I was there for that. And then the rest of it just, mm, I was bored. I thought the relationship was weird. They fought over stupid things for no reason. I just couldn't get on board, wasn't here for it. If you loved it, I'm so happy for you, but this just was not for me. Here we go. You know how I said I didn't think I liked Adam Silvera. I read Histories All You Left Me and I gave it a 2.5 stars. I actually talked about this in the Buzzwordathon at length so if you want really like thought out discussion about this like go there because I don't have the energy to talk about this again. This was an unhealthy portrayal of grief. I think that's purposeful but I don't think uh, it's clear that it's purposeful and that could be damaging. I just wasn't here for it. I thought it was slow. I thought it was boring. I thought the characters were awful. I just especially our main character Griffin. Griffin I couldn't with him. I did like the portrayal of OCD and I did really like the uh, discussions of therapy in this book so it got a 0.5 from that so this got a 2.5 stars but overall no. <laughs> Next up we have Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young. And so this was just boring to me. There's nothing wrong with it. It's the premise is so fascinating. And that's kind of what ruined it for me is that the premise was so fascinating. I thought it was gonna go in one direction and it didn't. Basically this is a story of a Viking inspired fantasy world where our main character, whose name I don't remember because it was not memorable to me, like most of this book, which is the problem. But anyways, our main character is fighting on the battlefield. This book starts with action. So if you like action, there you go. It starts with action and the action continues on through a lot of the book. So the plot of this is she's on that battlefield and she runs into her brother fighting for the opposite side. And what's so weird about that is not only is he fighting for the opposite side, but like he died. So she's like, um, I thought this was going to go into fantastical, maybe magical, maybe supernatural area. It, there's a very clear logical reason why this is happening. And I was just so disappointed for that. I wanted magic or ghosts or something fun and paranormal and magical and this not what I got. So it's not necessarily the book's fault. I think this book has an audience. It just isn't me. That's not the fault of the book or the author. But here we are giving it a two out of five stars. There are other issues with the book I have. It was boring and not fun and I didn't care about anyone in it. But you know. Next up we have Say You've Been Publicly Shamed by uh John Ronson. I always want to say Ron, 
Johnson, but it's John Ronson. Again, if you want a more nuanced and thought out discussion of my thoughts on this book, go to my Buzzword Readathon because I talked about it at length there. But basically, this is a book about, uh, well, it's a nonfiction book where a journalist, John Ronson, goes and interviews people who've been publicly shamed on the internet. He tries to humanize them, which I get and I like, and I think, you know, when you see something on the internet, you're only seeing a slice of it, and that's something very important to keep in mind. But in humanizing them to the extent he does, he also completely dismisses what they did wrong and the actions they took uh, on their own. And by dismissing those, it feels like he's saying, it's okay if you do these things, or, you know, if you do them, like, as long as people know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't ever publicly shame someone. We shouldn't make them feel bad. Like, what if you just don't know the full story? And I'm just like, mm, but like, yeah, maybe we should have a full story. But like, if someone says something racist, call them out on the bullshit. It's fine. I just, my ideologies in this book didn't max. I think it was well put together. I think some people will enjoy it. Just not me. <laughs> Next up we have Fireworks by Katie Coutinho. This was the only book before these last two months that was gonna be on this list. It's set in the 90s about two best friends who basically through a weird series of events end up in like this situation where they're uh, trained to be pop stars and they're horrible friends to each other and the ending is disgusting and I just kind of hated reading this book because of the characters, how they treated each other and actually I can remember it so vividly reading this book and just like being horrified every page and still reading because everyone had such visceral reactions to the ending that I wanted to get there and just experience it for myself and man I really honestly wish I would have DNF'd it and read spoilers because it wasn't worth it. All right, we're at the last book on the list. If you've been watching my videos recently, you 100% know what this is. It's The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. Everyone loves this book. I expected to love this book. The only good thing about this book is my feelings about it are hate, and there's hate in a title, and that's kind of fun to say that I hated The Hating Game, but otherwise, there's literally nothing good about this book. It's troubling to me personally that so many people love this book and idealize this relationship because it's like kind of creepy and terrifying and not cute or romantic and also like the main character, our female lead, is young, childish, whiny, entitled, a brat. I just, I can't with her. I honestly thought I was reading from the perspective of 12 year old, not like a 20 something year old. The boy is just mm, something else. And like, I get, he's like, hard exterior, soft interior, isn't that always a thing? Switch from hate to love felt too fast. There were problematic lines as all heck in this. There was one point where our main character describes her lipstick as slit wrist red, and I got so angry. Still angry when I think about it. I just really hated this book. Like, I don't want to talk about it anymore. That's how much I hated it. And like, I hated it so much, no matter how many bad books I read this year, I can't imagine this won't be my least favorite book of 2019. I, I, mm. But if you want more in-depth nuanced thoughts about why I hated this book because that was just like ramble, ranty, angry times, then go over to my Spedathon vlog where I talked about it a little more at, at length, I think, maybe. Maybe I ranted there too, I don't know. But if you want to hear me talk about it more, go to the Spedathon vlog because that's where I first talked about Anyways, it. Anyways, that is my entire list of the worst books I read so far in 2019. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Or thumbs down if you hate me now, that's fine too, but you shouldn't because we're all entitled to our own opinions. Anyway, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell notifications so and you're notified when I post new videos, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!